wanted to start with you. There's so much vulnerability that you need to tap into when you're showing your native language. And Nora has had that taken away from her at such a young age. What were some of the early conversations that you had with Celine about Nora's connection to her native tongue? And how did you create the space for yourself to dive into that vulnerability? It, you're right. It was so vulnerable to show what I think is a private part of someone's identity language. Um, Korean was my first language, but over the years, well into my adulthood, that's something that I have a very different relationship with. Mm. And I'd never shown that before. Um, and from the beginning, we had a lot of conversations, Celine and I, about the specificity of how we wanted to show that. And it felt really scary, honestly. I, I uh, for years, have had such a uh, love-hate relationship with that part of myself as an American kid uh, growing up in Los Angeles. Uh, so we wanted to um, hone in on what that experience really is like to be bicultural and bilingual, but it was never in service of like trying to present something or explain something because the real story is just a story about love. Uh, yeah. This very universal idea of love that any human being could can relate to, whether you speak Korean or not. You know, please. You know, John, you were able to draw a lot of parallels between your own life and what Arthur is feeling throughout the film. And there's a really subtle and beautiful moment when he reveals to Nora that she dreams in a language that he can't understand, which perfectly encapsulates how he feels like an outsider. Were you able to bring any of your own personal experiences to this character? And, and how did that collaboration with Celine allow you to take agency over Arthur's journey and bring those authentic moments to the screen? Yeah, so uh, uh, thank you for that. Um, I, I, I'm married to a Korean American woman. Um, and early on, I had a really nice dinner with um, Celine and her husband, Justin, who is also a uh, white American uh, male. And um, <laughs> a white guy. <laughs> a white guy. Let me just say that. Oh, he's a white guy. And so, so we initially started talking about these things. And it was fun to talk to Justin because I think we, we, we we sort of had a, a, an understanding of each other. When you're married to, to uh, a partner who has an immigrant experience and a very different uh, set of circumstances growing up, uh, you'll always feel like an outsider. So, mm -hmm. And you love them and you're supportive of them, but there's just a piece that you're, you're always never going to quite understand. Um, so for me, it, it, playing Arthur was just kind of a... You know, I've, I've said it was like being paid to go to therapy. It was just like a therapeutic kind of experience to, to express in a more poetic way, in a less stumbly kind of way, the feelings that I was already going through. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, you know, a lot of fun and also kind of scary to play. And then, Teo, for you, you've said in the past that you've been longing for a script and a character like this, which, again, is another interesting parallel to what your character is experiencing in this film. And Celine leveraged a lot of really unique techniques to create that sense of longing between all of different characters. How did those exercises help you step into your character's shoes? And were there any nerves knowing that a lot of that discovery was going to happen on the day and on screen? Yeah, um, two things, I guess. Um, um, for me, coming from a different type of immigrant experience, being born and raised in Germany, I always had kind of a feeling of displacement mm -hmm. that um, was always um, there with an undercurrent of melancholy. So that's, I guess, what you were talking about. I was always longing for a script where I can express that because I haven't seen it in, in contemporary cinema. Uh, another aspect for us that really worked on screen, I guess, was that Celine didn't want us to touch during rehearsal. And actually that first hug after 24 years that you get to experience um, on screen with us, that's actually the first time when we actually hugged. And um, also with me and John, um, <laughs> we were never allowed to see each other during our um, pre-production phase. Like the, the crew was professional enough to cater one person, like, you know, usher one person in in the front and usher the other person out in the back when we had like tests and whatnot. So, you know, those kind of visceral reactions that I had as Hesong were like, you know, really well prepared through, you know, um, Celine's kind of yeah. directing. All that not her, touching amounted to a pretty good hug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I should have like hugged 24 years ago so you could have had it be like real. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> or like a hologram of a hug. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, Greta, speaking of those, you know, techniques during the rehearsal process for this film, Celine had you work with Teo and John separately. And like Nora, you became that connective tissue between these two worlds where Teo was learning more about John through your lens and vice versa. What was it with that being such a unique process? What was that experience like for you? I was just trying to spread rumors about the two <laughs> of them respectively and create were. a lot of tension. Um, just a lot of animosity on so set, sit, sit make it sticks. really difficult oh, for the right. both of them. Um, Celine did ask that I keep these two relationships separate, and um, and it was something that was a very interesting experience in that I I did get to channel a lot of Nora's that feeling of that that purgatory space. I felt really different with each of them. Mm. Um, it drove me insane, but it was a necessary element to the core of the story that we were telling. Um, so the scene that you see at the opening at the bar, I think at that point I had, I almost, I felt like I was in two different movies with, with the two of them respectively. And then those moments when the two of them come crashing together um, was appropriately uh, crazy making for me. John, this is Celine's debut as a filmmaker, uh, and you've worked with so many directors throughout your career. Is the filming experience different when the person who created this universe is also at the helm directing? Uh, I think it really depends on the director. Um, you know, Celine's a freshman director, but she has a tremendous confidence. She has a deep yeah. well of knowledge about cinema and, and, you know, theater and storytelling in general. Um, so I've worked with directors who've been doing this for ages, and I've worked with first-time directors and auteurs and, you know, hired gun directors and all sorts. But I think what makes for a great director is that confidence and that clarity of vision. And Celine, although it was her first time, has that, has it like in spades. Um, yeah. So, you know, there was always confidence there. And as an actor, you know, you can't help but trust it. Thank you.